So you've received your weight loss recommendations, you've received your new meal plan, and you're excited to get started. Now, before you dive in, there are certain things that you are going to have to change when it comes to the psychology of weight loss and your relationship with food. Otherwise, you're just going to uh, basically set yourself up for short-term success and long-term failure. It's the reason why we all go through these yo-yo diets, why most of us always feel like we're going through some sort of diet at some point in our lives, and this is going to end. I want to teach you how to create a new healthy relationship with your body and food. I'm Dr. Holda Gay Weinstein, the Medical Director of Visionary Women's Health, where we offer a concierge service that also gives lots of uh, preventative health care, including a personalized health report and personalized nutrition plan. So let's get right into it. The very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to get out of the mindset of restriction. Try to have as much of the foods that are in your plan, the foods that you love and that you know are good for you in your fridge so that you remind yourself that there is truly an abundance of the foods that are good for you and you can have access to them according to your meal plan however and whenever you want. So reminding yourself that you're actually not restricting yourself um, from certain foods, but have an abundance is going to help uh, shift a lot of these emotions of deprivation um, that will sabotage our weight loss in the long term. The next thing is do not, I repeat, do not perform exercise you don't enjoy. If you don't enjoy the exercise, you're not going to stick to it. And frankly, you're not going to get the most benefit out of it. There are way too many options out there to be performing exercise that you don't enjoy. And if you're one of my uh, ladies that tell me I don't enjoy any exercise, we need to talk because I know that there are things that you enjoy. We tend to think of exercise as certain, you know, squats and all these things that you can do at the gym, um, hit and all a myriad of things running but exercise is really just intentional movement where you can get your heart rate up for at least 20 to 30 minutes that could be dancing that could be a brisk walk outside it could be a variety of things so again find exercise that you enjoy and make sure that you are performing intentional movement every single day along those same lines do not eat food that you don't enjoy. So if your meal plan includes a food that you hate, for example, there's a recipe with eggs and you hate eggs, don't eat the eggs. Try to look at your meal plan and pick five foods that you know that you absolutely love um, from that, or five recipes that you absolutely love for your breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a combination of that, so that you always kind of have um, a go-to. You always have a variety that you can um, just whip up uh, in your kitchen or uh, meal prep for that you're going to enjoy. And by having five to pick from, your brain uh, stay has enough of that variety that you don't start to feel like you're getting bored. So again, don't perform exercise you don't enjoy, don't eat food that you don't love. The next thing is I want you to notice whenever you're feeling emotions of guilt or emotions of shame. These things will come up when, for example, you eat something that you know you're not supposed to eat or you eat too much of something, you break some sort of rule uh, in these plans. And this is human nature. We start to feel a little guilty. We feel ashamed. We feel like, you know, why are we sabotaging our health goals? But I want you to refuse to feel those emotions. Every time you feel guilt or shame, what your body's going to or your brain is going to do is you're going to want to quit. And so you're going, you're more likely to go back to your old habits or binge eat or do any of those things because your brain is saying, oh, we failed. So there's there's no point in continuing to try. So instead of feeling, feeling guilty that you had too many cookies when you were only supposed to have one, you know, just simply um, tell yourself, well, at least I, I stuck to my diet for most of the day today. So I'm actually very proud of myself for doing that. Tomorrow's a new day. We'll just pick up uh, where we left off. The next tip is to eat with presence. What this means is try to avoid eating while doing something else, watching TV, 
driving, um, perhaps eating while you're in a meeting. I know sometimes these things are necessary, but make it a general rule that you are going to try to avoid eating while doing something else if you can. What this does is it allows you to really be present with your food and your body, to really make a connection with what you're eating and noticing how it's nurturing and fueling your body and also how you're feeling as you're eating the food that you're eating. Notice how you enjoy the various tastes and the flavors and the textures. Notice how it, it feels as it's uh, going into your body. And also notice the I'm full cues. It's because we don't connect with our food or our bodies in general as a culture that we often tend to overeat or eat foods that our body is trying to scream and tell us, I don't want this, this isn't good for me. So always eat with presence. I want you to also remove this notion of taboo foods and okay foods. There is no such thing as a taboo food unless it's something that's not nutritious, you know, like, I don't know, cardboard, <laughs> a non-food item. There are no taboo foods. Think of it instead as there are simply foods that are going to make your body feel better and other foods that won't make your body feel so good. And it's okay to sometimes eat the foods that don't make your body feel so good. But now, because your perspective has changed, you know that you don't want to have too much of that anyways, but it's okay to have it occasionally here and there. So remove that notion of taboo foods again so you can get yourself out of that mindset of restriction and deprivation. Recognize your excuses. We often, we all do this. I'm too busy. I don't have enough time. Uh, well, it's my the structure of my day. Oh, I have you know too much of, of the stress going on. Recognize when you're making an excuse uh, for against doing something that you know is going to be good for you. When you find yourself coming up with an excuse, simply pause and remind yourself that you are worthy of the change that you are seeking and that you love yourself enough to beat that excuse and to find ways to get over it. A lot of um, you guys, my patients have, that have received health reports from me, I have found times in your day where you can absolutely do the things that I think would help you, whether it's a, a very short exercise routine, meditation, breath work. Um, and many of you will look at it and say, you're right. I do have time to do that. And this is human nature. We all do it. And there is a part of us that doesn't feel like um, we're worthy uh, of, of this change or that we're even capable. And it's that fear and that lack of self-love that sabotages all of us. So all you have to do is just recognize when that excuse comes up and show yourself the love and remind yourself that you are worthy of this change and you're gonna find a way around that excuse. The next very important tip is to identify your body shaming thoughts. This is huge in our culture. I think since we are very little girls, we already start to learn to hate our bodies and to shame ourselves. Uh, and you can start by recognizing when those thoughts come up and this is any negative thought that has to do with your body. You can recognize it and show yourself some love instead. But I want you to do even more. Every single day, I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to give yourself a high five and congratulate yourself for putting yourself first and for being on this journey. Then I want you to celebrate something about yourself. We are all beautiful. We just need to see it. And I want you to start seeing that. Find what it is that day that you are finding absolutely gorgeous and beautiful or cute or sexy. And I want you to celebrate that in the mirror. The next tip is that it's important to recognize that our feelings of anxiety and stress and sometimes depression will trigger certain food habits. For example, I recently had a patient tell me, I love wine. I absolutely love it. I need to make sure that you integrate this into my food plan. And I uh, asked, of course, some further questions. And it turns out that she actually loved wine because the wine made her feel less stressed. And so I asked her, well, if I took away your stress, would you still love wine and want it every day? And the answer was no. 
So recognize that sometimes some of the foods that we say we love that aren't so great for us, that the quantities that we're consuming them are driven by some underlying emotion. So whenever you go and reach for something that you know, Ooh, I shouldn't be having another one of these, ask yourself, what is going on inside? What is the emotion that you're trying to appease? I ask all my patients who try to reach for food or alcohol um, when to essentially have a list of five different activities that don't have to do with something that you're going to put in your mouth that help relieve that emotion, whether it's meditation or breath work or uh, reading a book or talking to a friend, taking a warm bath, the list goes on and on. But take some time to make your own list. And when you notice that, when you take that pause between the thought of, I would like another uh, glass of wine and, oh, what am I feeling? I think I'm feeling a little stressed out. And instead redirect and reach for one of your other activities that can relieve the stress, you're also more likely to create a better relationship with food. Don't freak out when you are out uh, having dinner with friends or at a restaurant or maybe even at a party, an event, a wedding. You don't have control over sometimes what's served in these places. But, in, but again, we're trying to change your relationship with food. You want a healthy relationship with food, one where you look forward to eating foods that you enjoy. So look at every menu, every selection option as what are the foods here that are going to really help fuel and nurture my body that are going to be good for me? And try to make the best choices that you can in those settings. When you go into it with this feeling that, oh, there's not going to be anything that I can eat, everything is just going to be bad for me, then you're just going to be more likely to indulge in having, you know, five pieces of that cake rather than perhaps. Uh, eating a little bit of the protein and the vegetables that are available there. Also, remember, this is a dynamic fluid process. Your body is a very intelligent machine. If you're just occasionally having these uh, other foods that tend to make you um, either gain weight or not feel as great, you're, you're not going to see those negative consequences because you're not doing that on a regular basis. So enjoy your events, enjoy mm -hmm. times that you're going out, and go into it with the intention to pick the best foods out of what's available that are going to make you feel good. And the very last tip that I have for you is remember that our brains are designed to want food when we see food. So if you have chocolate laying around on your counter, you are going to want the chocolate multiple times throughout the day every time you see it. It's why I don't leave cookies and chocolate on the counter because I have little kids uh, in the house that are going to constantly ask for another piece of it. And I know that I'm also going to look at it and say, hmm, I could use some chocolate right now. So try to keep food out of sight so that you can also spend your time thinking about other things. I think as a society and culture, we spend way too much time not only thinking about food, but having this war on food and our bodies. And so I hope that this will be the beginning of a new journey, a very new, amazing relationship with food and your body. I'm so excited for you. Congratulations for choosing yourself and for embarking on the best journey of your life.